I think I mentioned on the last video that a couple of the transistors on the amplifiers did tend to run a bit on the warm side. So I bought some of these. They are ridiculously expensive from JCAR. Um, but they're the only type of heat sinks suitable for this project. Here you see them mounted on the transistors in question. It's a simple nut and bolt job and I've just squirted a little bit of heat sink compound on there to help. Now, as I've mentioned, these, these don't get ridiculously hot, but electronics in general, the cooler they, they're kept, the longer and the more stable they're going to be. Now, these are not the best heat sinks in the world, but you can see there's too much congestion around here for the more sort of conventional style of heat sink, which simply won't fit. Um, and then I've put them on on the basis that they're better than not having them on. Well, I've got the various pieces laying together now, and I'm going to start the main wiring. I'm still short of the main power on off switch. This is the speaker output terminals and they're going to be connected here. Those wires will go along here. We're just going to fit some spades to them so they can go in the screws. Now there's a bit of controversy whether one should solder or just crimp these terminals. I do both and I also tin the wire. I know that's going to be horror to some people but I find it's best because you've got the mechanical grip and you've also got the soldered grip which that's the way I do it anyway. Well the amplifier's kind of finished. Obviously as you can see it's not finished as such but it's to the stage now where I can actually apply power and it should work as a functioning amplifier. Now these leads here are going straight into the mains transformer. Now the reason being for that is if you can see here, well you can't quite see but there is the hole for the front panel because I haven't receive the on off switch which was act actually missing from the chassis components and so I guess I'm gonna to have to wait another four to five weeks before that comes but that's not a problem it just means I will plug the um, unit into the mousetrap also at the moment as you can see there's no end or side panel I should say with the heat sink um, simply because it has no active components on it and there's no need to actually have it there at this stage because at the moment it's a lot easier to poke about finding voltages and things with that panel missing. I've done the customary checking and uh, as I check things I tend to dab a bit of uh, nail varnish on I don't think I can endorse this particular brand, but it seems to work pretty well. But I've done all the checks as far as I can with the meter and a visual check, tightened all the screws, make sure everything's OK. I've wired up the volume control and cable formed it as far as I can go at the moment. This wire here is the only one I'm not quite sure what to do with. It's the wire that came with this particular module and it's a preset length. It's only got DC flowing on it, so I'm not too concerned. I, I'm, I'm reluctant to actually stuff it down there and take cable form it in. So we will leave it there for the moment and see how it performs like that. I don't like generally wires floating in the air, but um, whether I want it, we shall see. For the moment, it's going to stay there because there's also the possibility that when I remove the front panel to put the volume control in, it will be very handy to be able to unplug this.
Right, we've done all the tests. All we have left to do is to apply power. As I said, I wouldn't normally just throw the power on like I'm going to, but basically it's only the wiring that has taken place on, on this. So we know everything, all the ingredients work. So assuming I haven't made a catastrophic error, which has been known, it should all work. Um, so without further hesitation, I'll just tell you what I've done first of all. Here you can see the, the wires going into the mains and it's going into the rat trap. And I've got phonos going in here straight from the computer. Um, I'll turn the volume about a quarter of the way up. When I power on, it should default into the center position here. So if all goes well and we don't get smoke, you should hear some music. Um, which I will, won't leave on for very long for you know what reasons. So let's just go and we'll fire up the computer. Now there will be a delay of a few seconds while this um, relay protection checks that there isn't 6 million volts on the output. So I'm going to throw the switch now. Oh, I can see some lights coming on, so it hasn't gone bang. Oh. Wow. What can I say? I'm impressed by my own brilliance. <laughs> um, I, admittedly, that's not the ultimate of tests, but no smoke is good. And all the relevant protections seem to work. So we'll have a quick closer look now, shall we? First of all, we'll have a look at the protection board. I've turned the power off again. And somewhere in there is a little LED. And you'll see that work when I throw the power, power on. And click the relays are in. And also on the power amplifiers, there we go, we've got a little green LED on there that doesn't do anything except glow. So there's nothing else internally to show you. I don't have to show you anything burnt, so that's always good. What we can do, I think, before we do any amplifier actual performance tests, We'll just have a quick look around to make sure what the offset is and what the power supply is giving. Now we're going to have a look at uh, DC offset first of all, which should be pretty well a few millivolts or such. The amplifier is on and there is no input. And I'm just going to put the probes across the speaker output terminals. There is a load connected, which is the speaker. And I don't believe that. That seems awfully low to me. Can it be there's no offset? It's unlikely, isn't it? Well, I had to check that to make sure I've got it on the DC 200 millivolt range. And for all intents and purposes, there is no DC offset. And on the other channel, no, there, there <laughs> it seems ridiculous. I've never seen an amplifier with no DC offset. Well, there isn't. There's no DC offset. So the next thing we'll do is have a look at the HT supply. And it is HT because there's nearly 100 volts across this. And we've got it on the DC range, 200 volts. Should see about 50. Well, we've got 51 point something or other. It's my probes that's wobbling about that's causing it to flutter a bit. 
and the other side the mirror is down at the same good so our total HT is I've got the probes around the wrong way but it's 103 and a bit volts which is near to us 100 volts as we can reasonably expect because this transformer is a 220 volt transformer and the mains today uh, when I checked it earlier was about 231 so it's a little bit low so we can expect a slightly higher HT maybe but still well within the capabilities of the the amplifier right so that's the end of this video and the next time we will stick it on the bench well it's already on the bench but we will connect the scope and um, load to it and see um, what sort of power we're getting and what the waveform looks like now this is the only thing that's concerning me slightly is that um, as I said to you on the very first video I don't know much about class D um, and when I've tested Class D amplifiers before, there's always the residual carrier frequency. Now, on these, I believe it's about 300 kilohertz. Now, clearly, with a simple inductor, which is here, and those couple of capacitors, that will not remove it completely. It relies on the fact that any loudspeaker fed with that kind of vol uh, frequency it will represent such a high impedance and clearly you won't hear it um, if you're a bat you might I don't know but uh, for, for us ordinary people even if it bleeds through the tweeter clearly won't respond to that and it would represent such a high impedance that you won't heat up the voice coil or anything like that but my oscilloscope will see it and I'm fairly sure anyway we won't preempt that we'll have a look at it on the next video